my tight art of f***ing tuna! You can't give us the case to see to get the f*** out of the way! You might have seen this viral video. The guy on the left is me, and the guy screaming in the video, that's Captain Cam Feria, a commercial fisherman and charter captain in Cape Cod. The person behind the camera was Johnny Rigo, a fellow YouTuber and kayak charter out of Rhode Island. This past summer, we went commercial tuna fishing together, and Johnny's video of Cam screaming at the other guy got over 9 million views on TikTok. The internet was quick to judge. While some felt that Cam overreacted, others believed his reaction was justified as a commercial fisherman, and that the other boat should have known better. Today, I'm releasing never before seen footage from that incredibly hectic day. And if you like what you see, make sure you drop a sub for more videos like this. Remember, I think it was like a 3 a.m. wake up, uh, maybe even a little before that, uh, but I was prepared for that. I mean, I've fished a bunch, you know, recreationally, so. I think it was a pretty, pretty okay day. It was a little rough in the morning. I think it was pretty sloppy, you know, on the way out in the morning and then as the morning went on, I'm pretty sure it flattened right out for us. This is my first time tuna fishing, so I was nervous. The main thing I was worried about, to be totally honest, was I knew Cam was doing this commercially, so there was like a couple grand on the line. I didn't want to lose the fish. I didn't want to be the one to lose the fish. So that was kind of like the thought in the back of my head. Yeah, we were commercial sea bass in a couple weeks before that, maybe more than a couple weeks before that. And uh, we went out there, didn't mark any fish, but you know, if the whales are there, the life's there, the bait's there, there's no reason for the fish not to be there, so. We were seeing like humpbacks and all these different kind of whales and a lot of guys were fishing and like people were seeing like called bubble feeds. Like the whales would do an air bubble and apparently like fish feed on that. Uh, a lot of life on the way out, so. We used squid. Um, we were trying to use mackerel. There was mackerel we were fishing as well as squid. I think we're getting mainly max. I know Cam was slaying like giant squid, like foot long, like tube squid. Um, yeah, that was really easy. Like we were catching bait within seconds of dropping down. What Cam ended up doing was putting a live mackerel out at the front of the boat and a live squid out at the back of the boat. It was at this point that I laid down to take a fatty nap and I woke up to the sound of drag. I knew something was off. Um, didn't take a run real quick. Um, you know, I saw the way the balloon moved. It just didn't didn't feel like a tuna. It didn't act like a tuna. So we hooked a shark, like probably even sooner, maybe within ten minutes of having bait out. It was a brown shark, I believe. And we tried to, I tried to grab its tail, but I messed that up when the line broke. After a few more shark attacks, Cam decided to give up on the mackerel and just stick with squid. So he reset the drift and put down a fresh one. And that was when we had our first tuna on. We got sharked and I reset. And when I reset, that's when I decided to throw a squid on. Get to the back of yeah. Holy. I was almost like deer in the headlights for a second because that was my first time ever seeing a tuna rod go off. You know, I, I knew it was a better fish um, just off of those first couple initial runs. And uh, you know, we put some heat on him and he still, he still took some lines. Put it in reverse. Cut it, cut it, uh, clockwise, clockwise. Hey Sharky, you want to go on? What's that? They want a good one. Yeah, a good one is that what you said? Yeah, we want a good one. Uh, anyway. Here we go, baby! But the excitement was short lived because not long after, we saw the fish was headed straight for another boat that was in the distance. Look out! Like when I first saw it, like I thought possibly he was tight on a fish and you know, the closer we got, the more I realized that just wasn't the case. The main thing I remember is Cam screaming at this dude to like back away. He yelled at him at least like three or four times, like yelling at this dude, like get away, get away, too close, too close. And it just seemed like he was like, not listening and getting closer and closer. So I kind of felt like impending doom. Go to the right! You know, I was just trying to get his attention. You know, I don't think he was really aware that there was tuna in the area. Um, where we were getting the fish, it's not very common for tuna to move in that uh, close. 
and I think he was just, you know, out there fishing. He didn't really, really realize what we were tight on. It looks like he's trolling, so he's like actively fishing too. We don't even know if he's aware of what's going on, if he's doing this intentionally or like what the situation is. And on a few occasions, he actually did move. But, you know, we're headed in a direction, you know, say we're going three miles an hour, and he would he would pick up his line and he'd only move up, you know, another 100, 150 yards, put his line back in, start rolling right across our bow again. So, you know, that was, you know, it, it started to get nerve wracking, you know, the second or third time, you know, he was trolling across our bow. I knew things weren't looking too good. I just had a bad feeling. Like, it seemed like the situation was approaching like this guy is gonna run over our line. Yeah, what do you need? Okay. We don't get the thing in as fast as humanly possible, all right? Oh, okay. Let's go. I remember how fast I got tired and how fast that dogged me and I was like, just never experienced that before. Actually, in one of the videos I recorded, I started dry heaving, and I think it was a combination of <laughs> just like nerves and just exerting myself fighting that fish and kind of running back and forth. Oh my god. All right, you ready? Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to need to tap in. Let me know when. Tap it. Tap it, tap it, tap it. Go, go. right on the right on the line and that that already to me was oh god um you know not good you know right we, we could have a situation here you know if it was hooked through the line you know through the braid it could weaken it oh it's his line we have his lure on our line oh jesus his plug actually rat is on our line we see his plug moving he was like trolling for bluefish i wonder why he's hanging around we'll just cut it when you see it After that situation he moved up again you know he had already trolled over our line and he you know moved up another hundred yards to start trolling off our bow again not this way dude are you kidding me usually your voice is enough you know um you know it wasn't an overly windy day or anything like that so um you know it all depends he could have had a loud engine you know a loud engine he would have never heard me watch out watch out you're on our fish he, he was just too close um our fish was stretched out on the surface and his lower unit got caught right on the right on our line like there was a pivotal moment where cam realized like we're gonna have to chase this guy down and that's when cam was like just floored it towards the guy get ready real i thought the fish was gone um you know as soon as it got caught on our on his lower unit um we kind of you know picked up and kind of tried to run at him um you know to save whatever chance we had of landing that fish and you know in my mind that fish is gone you know i've never had a fish get caught in a lower unit and you know i've never had it even happen with a tuna 
but you know I've had it happen a couple times striper fishing and I've never landed a fish that came out of an engine so oh yeah I remember this distinctly I remember feeling bad for you because you had to crank as fast as you possibly could and you were not even close to catching up to it it was impossible this cam we're flooring it at this guy like almost full tilt like no one could keep that line tight so at that point I I pretty much figured that all hope was lost because there was literally no tension in the line. Are you serious? Dude, we're tight on a f***ing tuna! You can't give us the decency to get the f*** out of the way! I was kind of just like almost deer in the headlights at this moment because you were on the rod. Cam was kind of just yelling at this guy and I was just the furthest one back and I couldn't do anything. So I was kind of just like, wow, this is like got intense. I came a little unglued and uh you know while while this was happening he was in his boat um trying to lift his engine you know that's my job that's my that's my paycheck at the end of the day um bringing that fish home so when you see somebody run over a two two three thousand dollar fish i mean it it sucks that's your fish i worked for that you know that's my paycheck at the end of the day you, you know you feel bad for yelling at dude but you know cam puts a lot of time effort and money into this and that's a two three thousand dollar fish he has he felt bad he he even like you know looking back to what i said about how he didn't really know the situation he was apologizing to that so i'm sorry i didn't know the guy he didn't do it intentionally so he the guy was apologizing and I think Cam realized that and kind of like backed off him. So it was like a kind of a strange interaction where we started to realize like, okay, this wasn't intentional. And uh, while he was apologizing, lifting his lower unit out, um, that's when that line came squirting out. And honestly, after that, I, I didn't hear a word he said. The line shot out and got tight again. And then Cam like iconically said, oh my God, we're still tight. Is there any line coming out of the other side of that crop? Oh my god, we're still tight. I know, I was trying to yell at you the whole way. Go put the boat in reverse. Hurry up, put it in reverse. Yep, it's fine. Now at this point, mind you, our lines are still tangled, meaning we had to somehow get his line and cut it off of ours. Nice, 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 nice. nice. This is just fine. Dude, how did we not lose that fish? Right here, you win. Cut the wheels on the left. Knife's on the cooler, Johnny, watch out. All right, he's got the scissors. I mean, just like, watch out for the shark. Oh, oh gosh, all right. you can grab this one and grab it. Dude, I've never even had that happen with a striper. Never mind a f***ing tuna. Like, we're gonna lose it, I'm saying. Okay, Johnny. Johnny, here. Just cut it. Yeah. Okay. Good, wind clear? Yeah. Here you go, Johnny. Do you need a break or do you want to keep at it, Cam? I mean, I can keep at it all day. I mean, you keep fighting them. I just, I want you to land this fish. After that, I kind of jumped back into, okay, we just dodged a massive bullet. And again, this is my first time ever targeting bluefin tuna. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing out there. So I kind of jumped back and like, okay, now we got to land this fish because we were just gifted, like still having it on the hook. So basically back to, hey, don't pop the hook. That was going, that was pretty much the only thing going through my head at that point, do not pop the hook. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I was way more nervous than having fun in this situation. Uh, again, just the fear of, of losing the fish. Cause imagine like, being the one that pops the hook after that amazing story of the fish coming off the engine is still attached. And like, yeah, I was nervous. All right, Johnny, come here. Yeah. Keep that ride bent, Michael. Yeah. You can keep that ride bent more. Gas and harpoon ready. Okay. Excuse me. Yep. Yeah, 
Yeah. Dock line's in here. Also, guys, major importance. You cannot let this line touch the bow. Or touch the boat. The closer they get to the boat, the more at risk you are for losing them. They can break you off on the boat. They can take a wicked run. Um, that swivel can get caught in the guides. I've never had it personally happen, but you know I've had it get hung up a little bit. All right, just be gentle. Okay. You can get a little line there. I remember I was about to tap out again, and I saw the leader, the swivel leader, leader come up, and I told Cam that, and he was like, do not tap out, because that means the fish is right there. You know, he was talking about tapping in, um, you know, somebody else, and then about two seconds after he said that, he's like, oh, I got swivel. And I was like, nope, stay on the rod. You know, we got the fish right here, he's got swivel, so. <sighs> yeah, I might need to tap out. Oh, I got leader. Do we see him? Yeah, I see him. Every time you hook a tuna, the first time you see it, it's like, okay, it is a tuna. It doesn't matter if you fight it for four hours, you know. When you get that thing up and you see it's a fish, you know, it's a, it's a sigh of relief. It's also, you know, a lot more pressure now. You know what you're dealing with. Um, but it was nice getting that first glimpse. And I saw it come up. I mean, biggest fish I've ever seen. I've never targeted bluefin before. I was just kind of speechless I was just blown away I was like well that's what they look like in person you know you see all these pictures but you see in real life it's it's pretty cool it's at this point that cam lines up the harpoon for the perfect shot and he whiffs it I prefer to not have to throw the harpoon in the heat of the moment most of the time I usually end up throwing it you know he was on the surface but he was out a little bit and then I believe he circled back down and that's the first throw I took um, but I missed that throw. I didn't get nervous because th the fish just quit. Like it was next to the boat. And you know, I've seen videos and I've heard from Cam and you guys that there's been other tuna that they get to the side of the boat and they kick your ass. But the fish didn't move or anything. So he was able to recover fast enough to just stick it again. Get this line off the boat. Get this line off the boat, yeah? That moves so fast. As soon as you get the harpoon in them and you go to tie him off. It's a uh, hectic. He could still take off. You're still fighting that fish. So you can't assume just because you have that harpoon in him that he's dead. You still need to watch that line. Because um, if he, if that line touches the boat and breaks off, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on that line. Now all you've got is that dart line. And I mean, that's what it's there for, but preferably don't fight him on that dart line. Nope, 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 nope. Give me some line. Put that one down. Ugh. Holy Woo! Let's go! Dude. Yeah. I remember Cam just like hooting and hollering because he pumped and landed the fish. I was just more like in shock of like, I think it was a combination of just that entire wacky scenario and then just seeing the biggest fish I've ever seen tied up right there and just kind of like playing a part in that. I was more just like, wow, like kind of speechless. It was just like, oh my God, like there it is. First thing I do, I, I don't say I have my fish until I put a second line on them. You know, I, I get their mouth open. I put a line through their gills, put that to the front of the boat. That way we can drag them head first, try and uh, flush them that lactic acid out. Nope, nope. Ah, you biting me this cock. <clears throat> mm. oh, yeah. Three. I'm gonna lift on three, two, one, lift. Yeah, good, good, good. Get down a little. Holy sh! Hi, did you take that gap out of his mouth? Yeah. Yep. That's insane. Three. Two, one. She got him. She got him. She's going. 
Hold him. I got him. Once the fish was in the boat, it had to be gutted, put inside an insulated bag, and then packed with ice. All this is so that the fish's meat does not spoil by the time we get back to shore. Then we're gonna shimmy it under them. Then once we get them shimmied under and in the bag, we should be able to kind of work them into it. And then we'll pack them with ice, put ice around them, and we'll pack them. Alright. Where's this scene? Right here. Yep, don't grab him by the lip. We should have left the line on his tail. We should have left the line on his tail. Alright. Alright, um. That around his tail if you can. We should be able to. Eric's coming over. You in the got him in the boat yet? What? You got him in the boat yet? Oh, did you turn that all the way down? No, all the way down. Still. Yeah, it's all the way down. My fault. <clears throat> no, we marked like uh, sporadically. Yeah. You all clean? I'm not. Oh, I thought you said my office. Yeah, I don't have a sharp knife. Yeah, let me get this in the bag and ice it and then I'll hop on. It's gonna take me two minutes. My, probably gonna take me ten minutes. We get him in and then ice him down a little. Alright? You gonna put a line in? John? Did you? Bring this up then, huh? Yeah. Well, we'll leave it. We already have it out. Dude, this thing had like 15 squid in its stomach. I'm gonna get bit on a squid, dude. As soon as I get that back, we'll see fast it went tight. Yeah. I had both out. I was thinking it was the 180. I was, I was over here ready to trip on the 170. I just put a hook. Dude, I had 180. You wanna see? I'll show you when I hop on what I went tight on. What hook did you get on? A BKK 8 Ot live bait drifting special. I got them on a Charlie Brown sheet. I love them Charlie Browns. They're beautiful hooks. Designed some. I think they're the best hooks you can get. Designed are no good. I lost five fish on them. Yeah, if I see eights, I'm buying a ton of them. When it's been like this, it's closer to the shank. I've heard so guys break the rings. Huh? I've been hearing guys are breaking rings. Just don't go crazy. Oh, I don't. Alright, you ready? What are we doing? What am I doing? Just get them in the bag. And then I'm gonna put some ice in them and around them and then I'm done. How big is it? 91. Steve is 100. Is it? Uh, I, mine's not, mine's in the 80s. I don't give a f No. I got a fish and I, I'm gonna go talk to sea bass. I wanna get this thing in. I was gonna say, are you gonna go sea bassin? Do you have any towels or anything? I have some towels on this boat. Put on the fish? I have nothing. I have ice. You can pack them. I got ice. Okay. He was loaded? Yeah, John's good to me now. He's off the list. Can't get any more down in John. Get nice cubes down here, so that means. Oh yeah, that was a fish. Now that the tuna was packed, it needed to get sold. We ran back to shore and about an hour later we got to the buyer. Obviously, this fish is so big that it needs to be hauled out of the boat with a forklift. You're good, you can take them right up. Okay. 
Afterwards, it's placed on a pallet and brought through a warehouse. The tuna eventually gets weighed. Final weight was 348 pounds. After subtracting the weight of the pallet, it's a pretty bizarre feeling seeing all this work amount to just meat on a pallet. The fish eventually gets tagged and then shipped to another company who will then process the tuna. This fish's final destination is Japan, where it will probably change hands at least two more times and be auctioned for about $10,000. And Cam only sees about $2,000. Thank you for watching this video if you've made it this far. The YouTube algorithm thinks these videos might be of interest to you, so check them out if you want to see more content like this. So why did you just radio the guy down? A lot of people are saying that. I mean, there's a lot of radio channels. Um, we were on a radio channel, but you know, I don't speak a hundred languages, so, you know, we were on one and that's, that's it. But isn't there just a public broadcast radio that you can just call everybody at the same time? Yeah, that's reserved for like when you're dying. <laughs>